If you've ever played an intense action game, you may have noticed a slight pause right when the hits connect. This is often called hit stop or hit pause, and it's one of the many tools developers can use to influence the feel of their games. So in this video, we're going to be implementing hit stop in Unity, and along the way, we're going to cover some important topics in Unity, like the time class and coroutines. I'm going to be using this top-down shooter mock-up for this tutorial, but the implementation will be the same for just about any game. Here we can move around and shoot. When a bullet hits a crate, it spawns a destructed version and destroys itself. So the hit stop here will be when a bullet hits the crate. I've already created an object with a script to work in called hit stop, so let's start coding. We're going to want a public void, let's call it stop. We're going to need to know how long we want the hit stop to run, so let's call that duration. The main thing we need to do here is set time.timescale to zero. This will effectively pause the game, and that's actually normally how you would stop the game for a pause menu. What we're doing here is actually pretty similar to that. Most of the time you'll be setting timescale to either zero or one, but you can also set it to other values for things like slow motion. This timescale variable is just a member of the time class, which you may have seen used to get the game's time with time.time. .time. You may have also seen time.delta time, which tells you how long it took to draw the last frame. These are all just related things held within the time class. If you want, you can check the Unity documentation on time and see everything you can do with it. I'll leave a link in the description down below. The next thing we need to do here is implement the duration before we set back our time scale. You can't just put some kind of weight here. That won't work inside this function. Because this function wants to just execute one line after another. And then once it's done, it has to pass control back to where it was called and execute that stuff. You can't just have it hanging up here. What we actually need to do is call a coroutine. If you're new to coroutines, the best way to learn is just to dive in, so let's do that. You start a coroutine with iEnumerator. This kind of takes the place of the return type, like void, bool, or int. We're calling this wait, and we're going to pass that duration right into here. Now don't worry if this next part looks a little weird. We're doing a yield return new wait for seconds real time, and giving it our duration. So what this does is, after this line, instead of going to the next one, it actually stops executing the code, waits for this duration, and then after that time has elapsed, it'll go back to doing what's beneath it. So what we want to do after that is set the time scale back to its default value of 1, so that we can go on with the rest of the game. We do have to go up here and call it, so we'll say start coroutine, we'll call wait, and we'll pass in the duration. Now that will actually do it. We can call stop and it will do a hit stop right now, but I would recommend adding at least one little layer of protection here, and this is gonna keep us from accidentally calling it twice in the same frame. So we're gonna make a bool called waiting, and this is gonna end up being true whenever we're inside of this waiting block here. So the way to do that is just set it to true at the beginning and set it to false at the end. So then right here, we're just going to say if we're already waiting, then just return. We're not going to execute the rest of this if we're already waiting. So what's really nice about this is if you have two things call stop at the same time, or you have other things going on, like maybe some of them have different durations, or you end up adding in instead of having it always be completely zero for time scale, maybe you do a slow-mo thing instead. And this way you won't have any kind of conflicts there because you can only call one at a time. And if you want, you can go ahead and implement more complicated resolutions to this kind of problem, depending on really exactly what you want your game to do. But for this example, we're gonna stick to this more simple method because it'll be more widely applicable to any case. So now that that's all completed, we can go over to the crate object and actually call this method. Now I'm using it on the crate here because the crate already has a script on it. I needed to 
replace the crate with its destructed version when a bullet hit it. So I already have this logic here and I can kind of just slot this call right into the method. So I'm going to go right into where we have the collision with our bullet here. And I'm just going to add in find object of type and we're looking for our hit stop object. And on that, we're going to call stop and let's give it a duration of a tenth of a second. So now we are calling the stop method. So let's go ahead and head back into Unity after we save this and see what it looks like right now. So as you can see, it is uh, halting it. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to a full second just so we can really uh, make it very obvious that this is happening. You can see it's, yeah, it's definitely calling the method and stopping, but it's not really doing exactly what we want it to do. So it's replacing the object before we can even see the hit stop. And that might be what you want to do, but I'm going to venture a guess that most people probably don't want this to be what happens. So we'd probably want it to freeze as the object is being hit and then after the uh, hit stop, have it be destroyed. And I also even have this nice little flash white effect that's going on here, which we don't even see right now because it's being destroyed before we can get a chance to see it. So to get around this, a good way to do it is just make another coroutine. So let's go down here and make one. So we're doing I enumerator and we're going to call it wait for spawn because we're going to be spawning in this uh, broken prefab. So inside of here, we want to wait until the hit stop is done before we go ahead and instantiate this prefab and destroy the crate itself. So there's different ways you could do this. You could pass in a certain amount of time or something like that. But I think the better thing to do here is to just check against the time scale. So what we'll do is make a while loop and we're gonna be checking to see if time scale is not equal to its default value of one. And while it is not equal to that, we're going to yield return null. So this yield return null is a lot like the yield return uh, new wait for seconds that we did in hit stop. Uh, it's gonna be telling this coroutine to come back to this later. Uh, but instead of waiting for a specific amount of time, yield return null just waits till the next frame. And what'll happen here is when it comes back, it's gonna try to execute the next thing to do. But you can imagine with this while loop, there's actually kind of like imaginary brackets here. They're just not syntactically necessary. So it's gonna reach the end of this while loop and it's gonna go back and check this condition again. And if it's still not equal to one, it's just gonna yield return null again. So it's gonna keep waiting a frame and waiting a frame until the time scale is actually equal to one. And then it's gonna go ahead and exit the while loop and execute the code below. So after our hit stop is done, we actually want to do what's just up here. We want to instantiate this prefab and destroy the object. So instead of doing that there, we actually want to do start coroutine and wait for spawn. So now if we save this and head back into Unity, we can see that our hit stop is now working just like we wanted it to. Thank you for watching this video. My question for the comments section today is, what's your favorite feeling hit stop in a game? If you're new to the channel, go ahead and check out my other tutorials and subscribe so you don't miss the next one.